My so-called life is sponsored by... How's it going? I'm Godless Sewing and this is the Godless Sewing Channel. So today, I'm going to be talking about how I brought my 1950s Singer sewing machine back to life. I want to say that I rewired it, but let's be real. I replaced the motor. Also, I found a beautiful Elna Lotus and it's a mini sewing machine. Also, I made the undershirt to end all undershirts. So as always, strap on, wear a helmet, and let's go sewing! Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Walter O'Keefe turning the microphone over to the cat. Take it away, kitty. Oh John, I'm so discouraged. How can I ask anybody to this house the way the furniture looks? Well, it is pretty awful, but I don't suppose we could buy much with our money. Not unless a miracle happens. Ah, uh, there's the miracle. Hurry, 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 hurry. Answer that doorbell. That's the first time I ever saw a miracle in a two-pants suit. But it's the singer man. He'll send her to the nearest singer sewing center. So, I know I'm completely biased and I always say that these machines work better than modern day machines, but it still amazes me how something that can be a hundred years old or something like in this case that is 70 something years old still works. So maybe I'm easily impressed or maybe I just love sewing machines. <laughs> But this is my 1954 Singer 306K. It's from Scotland and I absolutely love this machine. That's one of the reasons I wanted to bring it back to life. The motor just was wired wrong. Whoever had this machine before had no idea what they were doing and they completely completely destroy okay 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 now i gotta start over okay <sighs> this all right all right so this is my singer 306k it's a 1954 uh, okay so this is my 1950s 306K. One thing about this machine is that it's an absolute workhorse. I replaced the motor with a Sears Kenmore motor because the clone sewing machine parts fit perfectly in these old Singer sewing machines. So like I always say, instead of talking about it, let's see it in action. Oh, absolute perfection. You may not be able to see it from this far away, but this threw down the perfect stitch. And when you're making something like a coat or a koofy or something that requires a tight stitch, a machine like this is perfect. So, like I always say, stay creative, keep sewing. So, for anyone interested, I made this undershirt using Simplicity Pattern S9-158. You know, it's amazing the things that you do instead of sleeping. The other night, I made this Plague Doctor mask, and I'm actually kind of impressed. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't use any patterns whatsoever, and I like how it came out. The beak does look like a shoe bill stork, but that's okay. 
This is definitely gonna scare people on Halloween. I used glasses from the 99 cent store for the eyeballs. All I did was buy a cheap pair of sunglasses, pop out the lenses, and I just stitched around the eyepiece. And it came out perfect. Do you know, this was kind of like a weird craft, and I don't know why it took me so long to make a Plague Doctor mask. I absolutely love how this turned out. So, like I always say, stay creative and keep sewing. So in my last video, I was reupholstering my old office chairs. With two chairs to go, I ran out of material. So of course, I went to my local Walmart and bought way more material than I needed for two chairs. I bought four yards with the material that I had full intentions of reupholstering the chairs with. And then... I saw this beautiful material, and of course, I bought four more yards. So this time, I plan on making a long sleeve shirt or a long sleeve sweater. I've made five coats in the past two or three months, so I think I have that pretty much covered. So I'm gonna get my patterns out, see how it looks, start sewing, see how it comes out. You know, I am absolutely impressed on how this shirt came out. I was going for an undershirt for my vest and it is perfect. It's nice and warm, even though I live in Southern California and winter may or may not ever show up. But I made the cuffs nice and long and I love how this came out. I'm trying to add a little bit more color to my wardrobe because I wear black every day <laughs> this was a great project and if you're looking for something to do i just go into the simplicity drawer at my local walmart or at my local joann's or wherever they have designs and i just look for shirts you know or just look for new ideas it's something to do and it's just a great hobby so like i always say stay creative and keep sewing. So last week, one of my missions on the weekend was to reupholster the last two office chairs in my garage. And I went a little crazy with the fabric. Between going to Joann's, Michael's, Walmart, and my local thrift store, I bought way way too much i made an undershirt for one of my vests and i still have yards and yards of material the first thing that i bought from walmart was this southwestern print that i absolutely fell in love with they were charging too much for cutting it out on the table so i just bought two yards because i always end up just saying oh i want four yards and getting way way too much at my local thrift store 
I found this material and it feels like um, a 1980s windbreaker and it's quite a few yards of it so I think I'm going to make an old school trucker jacket. I'm excited. It's hunter green so it definitely has that 1980s look. I... <laughs> I also bought this because I can't turn down anything burgundy. It's my color. It's the color I love at this point. I've accepted it. So this is where I went a little crazy. I bought four yards of this and I probably have uh, three, two and a half to three yards left, which is a lot. Lot. So if you have an idea of something for this, definitely let me know. Also, <laughs> I have three, if not more, yards of this. And I bought this particular material to reupholster my chair, and I went a little overboard. I was thinking about making like a 1970s dashiki shirt or something really loud with this. But let me know in the comments because I have gone overboard with fabric. But, you know, could be worse. <laughs> like I always say, stay creative and keep sewing. Fight high food prices with Ward's Deluxe Upright and Chest Freezers, now $40 off. With adjustable cold control, safety locks, and removable baskets, only $2.98. Ward's 20-pound capacity washer with nine automatic cycles is reduced $50. And the matching electric dryer for wrinkle-free clothes automatically is reduced $30. Save $80 on the pair, where energy and money-saving appliances come to Montgomery Ward. This is my Elna Lotus SP. In the late 60s, this was sold as the first portable lightweight sewing machine. The one thing I love about this sewing machine is that the case is built into the machine. It is the exact same size as a Singer M1000, so I'm calling it a mini sewing machine. The difference between this machine and most is that it's a fully functioning machine. It has needle position. You can actually pick which stitch you're going to use. And once you get this going, it's a fully functioning sewing machine. That's the one thing that's the most important when it comes to mini sewing machines is there's a fine line between toy sewing machine and an actual working machine. So I am beyond stoked to get this Elna Lotus SP. So I'm going to take it apart. Let's get it going.
So, needless to say, there is never a boring day here in the House of Sewing. I absolutely love my new Elna mini sewing machine. I'm going to have fun putting this thing together and bringing it back to life. At the end of the day, always remember to reinforce your seams and be yourself because it's important. I will definitely, definitely see you next time. Hey, what do you think? What is it called? It's called a lakeside stank.